Hello and welcome to another episode of AWS Howdy Partner here on AWS On Air. Usually we're on Twitch, but for reInvent we've been uh, we've been taking over the AWS On Air channel here with partners. We are the only show for for partners uh, from the APN, right? So we, we each episode we've been highlighting a new partner, and today we're joined by. Matthew from Commvault. I'm A.M. Grabelny. I'm a dev advocate here at AWS. I'm joined by one of my amazing and wonderful co-hosts, Claudine Morales. Claudine, do you want to introduce yourself to the audience, please? Sure. Claudine Morales, Partner Solutions Architect. Happy to be here. Great to see you, A.M., and even better to see you, Matthew. Welcome to the show. Better to see Matthew. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Love partners. I understand. You know partners get special treatment at Howdy Partner all the time, so... I'm, I'm more happy to see Matthew than myself as I'm looking into, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the the view of myself now too. So Matthew, please save me from staring and look, looking at myself. Tell me a, a little bit about Commvault and tell me a little a bit about you. Okay, uh, Matt Erickson. Uh, I'm a senior product manager for Commvault. I look after AWS and uh, also EKS or, or Kubernetes uh, protection. Uh, I'm based in Melbourne, Australia, so that that weird accent is is Australian that you're hearing. Uh, if 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 you can't understand, head over to our, uh, our our sponsor booth and you can have a chat to me there, and hopefully I can slow things down and explain them to you. Uh, but anyway, I, I I work for Commvault and we are a data protection or data management company, and what we do is we help uh, protect, migrate, uh, replicate, perform DR for your AWS services and beyond. Now, what does that really mean? It means uh, if you tag it, we can snap it, share it, copy it to another region or another account, uh, and ultimately allow you to recover from unplanned events. Uh, we do this uh, across EC2, RDS, EKS, uh, out onto your outposts and, and local zones. Uh, we support all the new um, uh, alternatives to your, your traditional or relational databases. So, so uh, RDS, Aurora, Redshift, Dynamo, Document, the list goes on and on. Basically, if you want to protect something and, and store it for, for recovery later, we're your partner for doing that. That sounds amazing. And, you know, data was a pretty big piece of Andy Jassy's keynote last week uh, as well. So, uh, you know, we've got a lot to talk about from that. I'm excited to hear, you know, some of your thoughts later on in the conversation around, you know, all the keynotes that have happened so far, especially probably Andy's. Uh, I did have one question before we jump into it. Uh, I know Claudine's got a bunch of questions for you, but if I go to your sponsorship booth, as a person from a uh, different geo than uh, Australia, will you teach me Australian slang? Is that something that you Absolutely. could promise all our viewers? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm actually on the booth uh, most days uh, in our in our demo room, so so you can you can come and hear my dulcet tones on the on the demo booth, and I can give you a walkthrough of of how Commvault works to uh, to protect your AWS services. Okay, so not only do you get Commvault, but you also get some of the Australian slang. Just another incentive to go to that booth. All right, Claudine. Get us back on track, please. Well, I mean, the logical next question here is, will there be Vegemite involved? I have a soft spot in my heart for Vegemite, so I, I just have to ask. I love Vegemite. Vegemite is fantastic, and, and I won't hear anything negative about Vegemite. Uh, I but, seriously but love it, so. You are, I think you may be in the minority for for my US colleagues I have at least. Good taste. I think I, I do have good taste. So that's the reason why. But um Commvault is an advanced APN partner. Um and you know first of all what does it mean to be an advanced APN partner? I, I think for us it 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 means partnership, right? So so I mean we first added support for 
Amazon S3 cloud libraries oof, back in 2009. And since then, we've been partnering together with Amazon Engineering. I think we were one of the first to release Glacier and Deep Archive support. Uh, most recently, we've been working together, funnily enough, since reInvent uh, last year in, in 2019, we were on stage announcing uh, both of us testing your EBS Direct APIs. And, and we've now delivered those and, and they, they offer like an 85% performance improvement in, in performing backup of EBS volumes. And then most recently, we've, we've been part of the uh, APN or the Outpost Service Ready program. Uh, so we, we, amongst a number of vendors, were validated for backup and recovery, migration, and even DR of workloads, you know, on and between the outpost and the region. Fantastic. Maybe we skipped a step here to AM because I started talking about the APN and I don't know if all of our viewers even know what the APN is. The AWS Partner Network a community of partners from all over the world who build on top of AWS to enhance customer use of AWS. And we do have a lot of differentiation programs within the APN that we actually validate partner technology for. So you can't, you can't just be receiving a, some sort of designation without being validated. So you being an advanced partner, yes, like we understand you have been validated for, for certain things. AM. Yeah. Any other questions for Matthew? Yeah, absolutely. I, I've got a whole list. Uh, but yeah, my favorite part about the, the APN personally, working with the APN as, as much as I have, is, uh, you know, if there's something I'm looking to do with AWS and I can't figure it out or I can't get what I need working, uh, I can almost guarantee you there's a partner in the APN that either can or has or is, right? Uh, and they, they have a solution or will help you build a solution. Uh, to reach all of the things that you're trying to do. Tom Vault, uh, I'm really excited to learn more about how it approaches data management. And uh, in that same vein, right, we, we were talking through, uh, or I was talking through Andy, mentioning the explosion of data, right? Like just uh, data is, is, is out of control in a lot of cases. It's just more and more and more and more. Uh, if you all have been operating with AWS since 2009, I'm sure you've seen a lot of things but what would you tell a customer new to uh, Commvault or, or just a customer new to cloud about what they should worry about with data management? I think the, the obvious answer I'm going to give here is protect your data. <laughs> but but assuming you've got that nailed, right? You're, you're protecting your critical workloads. <laughs> yeah, it would be <laughs> correct, but, but let's, you know, look, AWS has some some great functionality functionality that we had to had to wait for in the enterprise things like the ability to snap workloads and and in, you know integrate integrate the creation of a backup or a snapshot and replicating that to another region for example all of that can be done with with the Amazon control plane today what Amazon uh, what Commvault adds to that is kind of a you know a single interface to manage that over the top so assuming you're already using Commvault to protect your workloads and replicate them where you need them there are some additional things that that you're going to hit beyond that and that you know, we often hear from from AWS that security is is problem number one or or issue job or, zero or does, job job zero. There you go. I I knew I was going to get corrected if I got it wrong, <laughs> which is great. So it absolutely is job zero, and it doesn't stop uh, just at your production data. So what we're seeing now is with the uh, the abundance of ransomware and malware. Um, kicking around in you know in in the in the industry, whether that be out at your laptop or hitting your public internet facing services, you need an answer to be able to detect ransomware and malware when it occurs. You need to be alerted and and be able to respond. Ideally, you want to be able to automatically respond to that event. And most importantly, there really is only one protection from ransomware and malware, and that is a backup copy to recover from. And our customers use things like S3 object lock and air-gapped backups. So that's, you know, creating copies of your data in disconnected 
areas of Amazon to ensure that they have a copy to recover from if and when that occurs. And this is quite common, right? We're seeing this via our customers, via our support desk, that customers don't get hit and they need to recover a laptop. They need to recover potentially hundreds of affected systems in parallel to bring their business back up. So that's probably number one. Number two is just governing your data after that. So you've now got data in you know, multiple regions. You may still have some on-prem, uh, on your outposts, um, even maybe out in, in local zones uh, as we're seeing that service expand as well. You need to be able to govern and manage that data for both cost and risk, but also for things like privacy. So where is your high-risk data and are you treating it appropriately? Um, and there's some of the challenges that our customers bring, bring to us as all of these new data types emerge. Great, awesome. Well, I know we may have several viewers out there who are thinking, oh, you know, we've seen plenty of backup offerings. What actually differentiates Commvault from all of these backup offerings that we see? Yeah, I, th I think it's, so there's a number of things, but fundamentally what most of our customers tell us, it's it's that holistic data management for all of their their locations. So it's, it's no reality that most businesses are in some sort of a hybrid deployment pattern today. So they, they, they have some workloads that haven't yet moved, uh, you know, off-prem into the cloud and and the the introduction of GP2 and I, IO2 block express volumes is certainly going to enable more workloads to migrate into AWS. But what they're looking for is a single holistic view of all of their data. They want to define their policy once and then manage and monitor their business via dashboards and reporting and alerting so that they can you know, ensure that they're recovery ready wherever their data is and ensure that they can continue to optimize those environments over time for both cost, as in re reducing storage where they can, or optimizing for, uh, for effectively the value of the data. So one of the things that Commvault does is uh, we, we protect services that, uh, that commonly aren't protected by by other tools. So a good example there is EKS. So we provide Kubernetes native or EKS native protection, regardless of whether that's in the region or on the outpost or now on EKSD, uh, which, which was announced during reInvent. And then we allow customers to take that data out of that service and store it for value. So they may store it on S3IA or even on Glacier or even on Deep Archive based on their, their regulatory or compliance needs. And so we're giving them a way to recover with, with snapshots, but also giving them a way to store their data for additional uses at reduced cost. Matt, you just mentioned uh, GPT or GP2. I think you you meant to say the GP3, right? Which uh, was uh, was what was announced. It's hard to keep up at this point, right? Uh, there's, there's a lot of announcements coming out, a lot of names, and they're all yep. like three letters, right? So uh, <laughs> yes, yeah. I but GP3. think I must have meant. I think I must have been thinking IO2. So you've obviously yeah. got we 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 saw announcements for um, uh, better GP2 pricing, right? right? And we already received improved performance and durability during the year. We got new performance announcements on GP3 and even bigger performance announcements on IO2 Block Express. So sand in the cloud for those that uh, haven't haven't caught the keynote yet. Yeah, I wanted to ask about what Commvault does with, uh, you know, kind of in line with what Andy was talking through, you know, kind of this data sprawl or, or data you know, I've heard it called data fragmentation, things like that. Is there anything that Commvault can do to help, uh, you know, help manage that sprawl? Yeah, I, I mean, effectively, we've we have accepted that you are now going to be in a what, whatever you want to call it, hi, hybrid cloud, distributed, distributed computing, whatever term you want to use. Your data is no longer sitting in in your 
your single owned and owned and operated data center. So that's what that's what Commvault brings to its customers. Commvault has a a single pane of glass called Commvault Command Center, and that's a you know single sign-on integrated role-based access um, access into your data, and it's going to allow you to effectively manage the protection of your data both within its current location but also getting it out to where it needs to be to protect you from um, disaster events for example um, and it it helps lower that barrier of adoption so uh, Convault disaster recovery for example will allow you to create a disaster recovery you know run book as code solution between your on-prem vmware environments and vmware cloud on aws so again, making it easier to adopt and automate the control of your data across multiple locations. I love that. Automate is is the name of the game, right? Like the more you you automate, the less there is a, a chance of somebody making a mistake. I uh, agree with that. Decomplexify. <laughs> Correct. Yes, Matthew, you've mentioned. Um, EC2 multiple times today, and I'm just curious, how do you see AWS Compute Optimizer extension supporting EBS helping your customers? Okay, well, let me let me unpack that for a minute. So, so, uh, EB, so, so. Um, for those for those that don't know, comp, no Compute Optimizer, Compute. EC2 Compute Optimizer today helps customers effectively right size their EC2 infrastructure. Um, and we use EC2, so we protect EC2 infrastructure today, but we also use EC2 infrastructure to perform the data movement tasks um, between, between regions and accounts and, and so on. Uh, what was announced at, at uh, reInvent was the ability to get um, performance information from EBS volumes and be able to right size and respond to, uh, I guess, additional performance needs at the storage layer. And we think this is huge, right? So you've got to remember where we're at the the heavy end of 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 data management, right? So uh, Andy talked about reusing data and enabling data to provide insight to the business. We help that occur by by moving data where it needs to be, help transforming it into the the format that it needs to be for your the next generation of apps. And to do that, we need EBS bandwidth. And so, I see I, I see a very bright future here where the 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 compute optimizer or the EBS optimizer insights are going to be able to feed into something like systems manager and auto tune environments that are calling on more EBS bandwidth than they would normally. And this means when Commvault has peaking events like like let's say, you know, a a a massive recovery event for uh, ransomware or having to move a large amount of data for for DR or for some sort of a business intelligence initiative, AWS and Commvault are going to be able to work together to auto tune the environment to meet that outcome and then tune back down when we're done. Just amazing, right? Awesome. I have to switch to my sunglasses because the future is so bright. So. <laughs> wow. Absolutely. It's, it, it is going to be cool. I, I live for the day when, when I don't have to be tuning uh, that sort of an outcome, right? And for customers that are still performing movement and still refactoring their applications between, you know, between traditional lift and shift to containers to serverless, there's still a lot of data movement going on. So whatever we can do to make that easier, but also production grade and enterprise grade performance is 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 going to help adoption. If we had paid for the rights to that song, Claudine, we would have played that over your, your <laughs> last switch there. Uh, we don't, so uh, we'll, we'll remain frugal. That's we quite won't okay. Pay the song. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll still so, keep my sunglasses on. Yes, please do. You look very cool. I, I think I, I'm a little <laughs> jealous of this. Uh, they're pretty cool sunglasses. Uh, Matt, I would be remiss if we didn't talk at all about 
reInvent announcements or things that have been happening around reInvent. I know, I think we all love Andy's keynote. We, we got, we get all kinds of, of, of nice things happening during Andy's keynotes normally. And we have a lot of really cool, nice things happening uh, during this one. I mean, uh, I think another one that might have been a, a little bit relevant to, to you all at Commvault was, was Doug's keynote last Thursday as well um, with the partner uh, side of, uh, of, of reInvent. So yeah, I want to get perspectives on two things, two things from you. One, uh, from a personal standpoint, what are some of the things that just have you excited as a technologist uh, coming out of these announcements? And two, as Commvault, right, as, as somebody who's working with and for Commvault, uh, what do you see as, as exciting and, and things to, to explore with uh, your, your product team as you go back? Okay, so so I, so I, I absolutely need to mention that the music was fantastic uh, <laughs> on 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 Andy's kickoff, and and I had to make sure that I kept the volume down because the, the that keynote kicked off at two a.m. for me, so my family did not want to hear the soundtrack. Um, but look, uh, what excited me? I think uh, EKSD um, and EKS and ECS anywhere. I think are, are huge. I, I think that again, it's about you know lowering that that barrier to adoption, letting customers um, get comfortable with EKS and and ECS on prem uh, as as a as a bit of a taste to to get into that that you know fully automated experience that that the AWS control plane can can offer them. And I think what I hear from a lot of our customers is. You know, the moment you have one Kubernetes cluster, uh, you turn around and you've got 10, right? And then you're having to lifecycle and manage versions and all of that on those. So I think EKSD is going to let people get comfortable with EKS as, as an initial jumping point or stepping stone uh, onto the other services. And Commvault protects uh, stateful and stateless EKS apps today, both in the region and on Outpost, and now on on EKSD, which is which is huge. Um, other than that, I think Outposts, some of the Outposts announcement were huge as well. And and again, you're seeing a theme here, right? It's about getting getting out to where the workloads are, getting out to where customers are are having problems that we couldn't traditionally solve that we now have solutions for. So quite often when I talk to a customer about outposts, um, it, it's great for three out of five of their sites, but then they have those, those two other sites that aren't quite as large as the others. And the fact that we have one and two RU outpost deployments now is going to allow us to touch you know all of those really unique corner cases like and and I, I shouldn't even call them corner cases telco network function virtualization they will love this right getting small units of compute with with you know performance and uh, with high performance disk and, and networking out to their edge locations. MSPs, ISPs are the same, retail the same. These are all environments that do not have data centers, but absolutely have a, a compute need at the edge. And we can start effectively refactoring their applications, right? Moving them from traditional, traditional heavy, you know, monolithic type apps into containerized deployments uh, running on Outpost. And we can help protect them once. Not only can we help protect them, we can help migrate them if they've got those instances of those applications in the region today. We can help get them out to those those uh, those new points of of compute. And then finally, and this is a tie, right? Um, compute and storage announcements. So being an advanced APN uh, storage partner, um, storage obviously uh, is close to our heart, but um, storage is nothing without compute, and uh, my my goodness. So we had R5B instances, which give you 3x the EBS performance. So that's 3x the performance for us to move customers' data out to where they need it, right? So this means we can move data faster, which means that the amount of data that that potentially gets lost between in, a, in an unplanned event is dramatically reduced. Um, 
obviously we've we've discussed EBS multiple times here today. So we had GP2 um, cost, uh, like tiered costing announced, but GP3 three performance tuning and IO2 EBS block store, providing that production grade, you know, SAN in the cloud type performance is going to allow more of those mission critical apps to, to get into AWS. So this is kind of, a, this is another way of focusing on the applications at the edge that we haven't been able to move in. But then more importantly, with, with the C6GN instances, the ARM instances, we can start doing this at reduced cost. So I, like we're just we're just spoiled for choice here, right? Performance, reduced cost. Um, customers are, are are going to go wild being able to uh, effectively tick off more of those applications that they couldn't traditionally move. Well, it sounds like you all have a lot of building to do, which is exciting. Uh, Claudia, and I have to say, you look very powerful right now. Um, I just, uh, like, I'm getting a lot of power from you. Thank you. Thank you, I uh, try. Uh, this is a, a powerful move you've made with these sunglasses. Um, well, I think we are running short of time. Uh, so I want to start wrapping us up. I, you know, first of all, Matt, thank you so much for coming on to Howdy Partner. It's It's been a blast having you. Claudine. Uh, I think you own Howdy Partner now. It is just now, it's is yours. I have to relinquish it to you. You just look. I actually don't agree with that. We're just oh, really no? following your lead here. And I'm oh. always grateful for the opportunity to host with you, AM. So thank you for having me here. No, thank you, Claudine. Um, I'm, I'm always happy to have you on board too. Uh, so, Matt, uh, I'm going to tell people to go visit your, uh, your virtual booth to uh, number one, learn about Commvault, but number two, also learn about Australian slang. Is there anything else that you'd like to, to tell our viewers to, to go out and do and engage with in 